Welcome to Forge Drops. This is Lillian Silva. I'm the Forge Special Amps Universe, and this is the third part of a series of videos on Forge Quality. So today I'll be approaching few topics about the effects of Forge Quality on animal performance. So let's get started. So I just wanted to emphasize this um, information about using the forge analysis results to um, really adjust the supplementation, the nutrients that the animals need. So this was a topic for last uh, week's video. And uh, I think that that's important to emphasize just um, talking about the impact of forge quality in animal performance. So uh, as mentioned before, we should be sending the, the forage samples either for hay, the hay samples or the silage or haylage, or even the pastures that the animals are grazing to be analyzed. So we can really understand how much nutrients we have on that forage uh, samples and uh, be able to adjust the needs in terms of supplementation and meeting those um, nutrient requirements for each uh, animal species or uh, categories as well. So here we're really going to be thinking about matching the forage quality to those animal needs. So when in general, when we're talking about this, we need to be thinking about the amount of energy, nutrients, and minerals that the animals need. And there'll be some differences on, in terms of uh, the maintenance requirements versus uh, other categories. So some of the major different uh, categories that we can uh, think um, of, at least my, out of the top of my head, is reproduction, growth, and lactation uh, versus the maintenance requirements, right? So in general, when we're going to be looking at maintenance uh, for most uh, animals, uh, those requirements will be on the lower range, so like around 10 to 20 percent of crude protein, let's say, or uh, even other uh, other categories and of livestock will have uh, even uh, crude protein requirements around like eight nine percent. Uh, but when when we have those animals in different categories, we need to be thinking about uh, if they need additional. Uh, requirements for uh, energy, especially, or even other minerals, just to be able to perform as we um, would like to, so the optimal range or even a superior range if they need to. One of uh, one example here is really uh, when we have females or males under the rep reproduction uh, stage. So we should be thinking, uh, in, especially in terms of energy intake, if they are really meeting the requirements. And for males, um, especially if we're having the, them uh, on the breeding um, season, we might need to adjust those require those um, that intake in energy for that period. Then when we have uh, animals that are growing and uh, we are really trying to meet a um, go for um, average daily gain or some some sort of measurement there for, for their growth, we will most likely have to adjust gradually that um, the need for nutrients in uh, throughout the period the period that we expect to have those animals um, meeting specific goals as well, just to, to allow them to, to perform it the best and they can. Then the lactation uh, period will require, uh, especially energy and protein levels, um, and even the, um, uh, their intake will have specific needs throughout the lactation curve. So there are different um, periods of time during those lactation curves that um, the cows will have uh, superior needs for energy and then uh, that, that starts to decrease based on the, the yield as well that's gonna change over time. Um, something that's really important to emphasize is really how we're going to be storing 
the if you're using hay especially because right now um, many folks are going to be looking at um, feeding hay through the following winter uh, months so I just wanted to emphasize in parts of the post-harvest management of the hay uh, material so uh, when you're starting hay you do need to be thinking about the best practice to assure that you're going to ensure that you're going to really um, maintain that forage quality that you harvested. Uh, because if we end up uh, storing that material directly um, exposed to weather uh, conditions, so uh, rainfall, and uh, especially if it's in direct contact with the soil, it might get contaminated um, throughout the time that is going to be there, sitting there. So you can see on the on the left here how uh, much of hay was uh, really directly impacted uh, for um, for the exposure to water that was logging uh, on that soil uh, on that area for a prolonged time. So all that will represent losses of uh, material and um, quality as well over time. And the same uh, approach when we're feeding uh, that material, we need to be conscious about how we are going to be feeding and uh, trying to minimize those losses and really optimize the use efficiency of that uh, hay so we can be um, really getting the most that we can on our operations, especially if the costs inputs that we're having uh, throughout the last few years, it's really important to be uh, looking at optimizing the efficiency of use of resources within the system. Uh, with that, I would like to thank you for catching up with this video today. Uh, I invite you to check the Facebook and YouTube page for Forge Drops. There's more information shared there uh, weekly. And um, I welcome any questions you may have, and uh, you're welcome to reach out through the email on the screen here. Um, thank you so much. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed the Forge Quality series, and um, until the next video.